Hey Queens, we're going to be getting serious today and talking about the full story of the misconduct of Joey Guigamelli, aka Sherry Pie. Before we start, I just want to give a quick trigger warning. This video is going to cover topics of SA and I will be showing clips and imagery of Sherry Pie in order to give context for the story. Please be careful if this video is likely to be triggering to you and click away if you need to. I will also be referring to Sherry Pie as Joey Guigamelli at points throughout this video as I don't believe he deserves to hide behind his drag persona. Now that we've covered all bases, let's get into it. So how did this whole situation emerge? Back in March 2020, just after the first episode of season 12 aired, an actor, who I won't name, posted a statement to Facebook. He gave a very long and detailed account about an experience he had with Joey Guigamelli back in 2015. He and Joey had performed in over 15 shows together, and he had performed as a dancer in two drag performances for Joey, but they weren't really friends. Joey asked him if he would be interested in a new acting opportunity in a play called Bulk at Playwrights Horizons, which is an off-Broadway theater in New York. Joey had him contact the casting director, Allison Mossy. What this actor didn't know was that Allison Mossy was actually Joey, posing as this casting director. Multiple people came forward in the comments of this post, sharing similar experiences with Joey and Allison Mossy. Soon enough, Joey shared an apology statement via his Sherry Pie Facebook page, in which he apologized for causing trauma and pain, and that he has been seeking help and receiving treatment. That's how all this came about, but what actually happened? I won't be going into major detail about exactly what Joey Guigamelli did to each of his victims, but I'll give you a brief outline so that you know the gist of it. When he was posing as Allison Mossy, Joey would manipulate actors into believing they were auditioning for Bulk, a play that was going to be huge for their career and would be picked up for a TV show. The character they would audition for was a bodybuilder who took steroids and was obsessed with getting bigger. As Allison Mossy, Joey would request audition tapes from these men, which were uncomfortable and explicit. More videos were often required with instructions to go bigger with the performance. This wasn't just happening online either. There are accounts of Joey going to his victims in person to help out with their audition tapes. One victim recalls having to perform explicit acts on camera while Joey watched. When his victims expressed that they were uncomfortable, Joey would reassure them that this kind of thing was normal for an audition. This exploit Exploitative scam was not just limited to a few people. There are over 20 victims of Joey Guigamelli. But what consequences did Sherry Pie face? Thankfully, this situation was not just swept under the rug. We've seen Drag Race and VH1 not do the best job at dealing with scandals before, but they definitely did a good job at addressing Sherry Pie's misconduct. The main consequence was Sherry was disqualified from season 12. VH1 confirmed this in a tweet from the official RuPaul's Drag Race Twitter account, the same day that Joey released his apology. In light of recent developments and Sherry Pie's statement, Sherry Pie has been disqualified from RuPaul's Drag Race. Out of respect for the hard work of the other queens, VH1 will air the season as planned. Sherry will not appear in the grand finale scheduled to be filmed later this spring. Spokesperson for VH1 and World of Wonder. Since the season had already been filmed, they couldn't totally cut her out of the season. Instead, they aired this disclaimer at the beginning of every episode. In light of recent developments and Sherry Pie's statement, Sherry Pie has been disqualified from RuPaul's Drag Race. Out of respect for the hard work of the other queens, VH1 will air the season as planned. Sherry Pie will not appear in the grand finale, scheduled to be filmed later this spring. Sherry Pie has been cut out of every account affiliated with Drag Race. They didn't post any of her season 12 looks on their Instagram, and she's been deleted from the DragCon site. VH1 clearly doesn't want anything to do with Sherry Pie or Joey Guigamelli. On top of that, Sherry Pie's reputation is ruined. Countless news outlets and publications released articles covering the situation. And whenever anybody hears Sherry's name, they're not reminded of that one queen from Drag Race. They're reminded of that manipulative predator who inflicted pain and trauma on so many people. Unfortunately, this scandal has cast a bit of a shadow over season 12. People found it difficult to watch, which meant that the rest of the season 12 queens didn't have the Drag Race experience they'd hoped for. And how did the other rude girls feel about it? When this story came out, Twitter exploded with queens from all different seasons discussing the situation. There were so many tweets that I can't take you through all of them, otherwise this video would be like 
three times long, but I'll read some that stuck out to me. Shea Coule of season nine and All Stars 5 said that people need to stop posting jokes and memes about such a serious issue. She tweeted, I know we all like to kiki over some drama. However, I think out of respect for the survivors of this whole Allison Mossy fiasco, we should think before posting jokes and memes about people's traumas. Be kind. The Vivian of UK season one tweeted, disgusted in what's happened. My thoughts are with the victims and the victims only. But please, telling somebody to kill themselves is not the way to go about things. The law will hopefully deal with this, but think before you type. And Aquaria of season 10 tweeted Sherry Pie directly, saying, an apology should not include lies, to say the least, at Sherry Pie NYC. You are walking on very thin ice. Choose your words wisely, because my community is not the one to with. In short, none of the queens were happy with Joey's actions. They felt Joey didn't represent their community, and they were totally disgusted by what he had done. Every queen that has spoken out, that I know of, has stood in solidarity with the victims and not with Sherry Pie. So what's Joey up to now? Since everything came out, Sherry Pie's social media accounts went pretty silent until February 2021. Sherry posted on Instagram announcing her appearance on the Tamron Hall show. It's been a long year of learning to own my many unpardonable mistakes. I'll be sharing my story, reflecting on my shameful actions, and working towards making amends live on the Tamron Hall show tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time at Tamron Hall show. This caused outrage online as people were upset that Tamron was giving Joey a platform. One of Joey's victims tweeted that he spoke with the producers of the Tamron Hall show and told them that neither he nor the 20 other victims he had spoken to wanted this interview to be aired. Tamron responded by saying that she wasn't giving Joey a platform. She was just interviewing him. She said, people who do bad things are interviewed. Anyway, they aired the interview and to nobody's surprise, Joey doesn't come across great. First of all, Tamron asks him if he's expecting any more victims to come forward after the interview. After this interview, do you anticipate that there could be more people who come forward with credible information that you did this to them to beyond those who've come forward. To which he replies that he doesn't know. I don't know if after I do this interview, if more will come forward. If he's saying that he doesn't know if more people will come forward, that tells me that there are more victims. He then goes on to give a long apology and attempts to take accountability for the pain he has caused his victims. Now, it's not up to me to accept this apology or not, but I will say that the apology he gives in this interview is very similar to the one he posted on his Facebook back in March 2020 when all this came out. Joey explains that he has been getting professional help through therapy. However, Tamron quickly acknowledges that these are all things he's doing for himself and that he has hurt the LGBTQ plus community, who already face dangerous stereotyping and prejudice by feeding into these ideas. She asks what he has done to help the community during this time. His response doesn't really give any kind of indication that he has tried to repair the damage he has done to the LGBTQ plus community. Instead, he mentions that he has reached out to three of the victims, one of whom asked him to never contact them again. Joey mentions that he did this in order to have a feeling of control over his victims and because he was terrified of losing them. A lot of these people were acquaintances, some of them even close friends. As some kind of explanation as to why he did what he did, Joey opens up about the borderline personality disorder diagnosis. It manifests differently in each person. You go from feeling very highs to feeling incredibly low. There's an immense amount of fear that comes along with having um, BPD. But Cameron makes it very clear that this diagnosis is no excuse for Joey's actions. Interestingly, Joey says that there are no allegations because he admits to his wrongdoings and his behavior. So he is not in any way denying what he did. Instead, he is agreeing that everything the victims have said is proven fact. If it came to it, Joey also mentioned that if there was a criminal investigation against him, he would be prepared to take that responsibility. But where does that leave us? Joey Guigamelli does not represent the LGBTQ plus community or the drag community. His actions are disgusting and his return would not be appreciated. Personally, I don't think Joey would try to make a comeback, whether it was as Sherry Pie or as himself. Perhaps that was what he was trying to do with the Tamron Hall interview. And when he received so much backlash for it, he decided against it. The whole situation is devastating for everyone who was affected by it. And my heart goes out to the victims. I will leave some resources in the description for anyone who is dealing with any similar situations. You're not alone and you can get through this. Well, Queens, what do you think of the situation? Leave your thoughts in the comments below.